Wow, that looks like a mess, doesn't it? Does that look like that would lower my stall speed 5 to 10 mile an hour? <laughs> Hard to imagine, isn't it? That's what they say. So we've got to get these painted and ready to go on the leading edge of the wing. We'll keep you up as we go. Right now we're going to get them painted. Okay, today we are going to be working on Vortex Generators. If you want to know what Vortex Generators are for, this is what they're for. This is what they look like. These are all individuals. Here's some already, already cut apart. That's what they look like. They are approximately one inch long and it'd be about three eighths wide. And they're supposed to improve the stow characteristics of airplanes quite a bit. That means this plane here in general, what I hear from people, it stalls around 40 without the vortex generators. With these vortex generators put on they're supposed to improve supposed to drop stall speeds from 4 to 12 mile per hour. Uh, the people I have talked to are getting 8-ish. You know some some gets more. Not really many had gotten less on the on the STI wing. So we're hoping for stalls in the low 30s after we get this on which slow which decreases your landing so this is a picture of them on the wings they go on the leading edge of the wing uh, my friends tell me two inches back for STI wing is where theirs works good uh, Dustin put his on that way and he had good results so that's what we're going to do with ours so they're so they're two inches back and approximately two and a half inch approximately two and a half inch spacing between each of them with the last ones being a little closer together uh, to help you help this part of the wing stall last which is what you want. That makes a nice straightforward stall. So we'll get them on. We was hoping to do this after we flew, but uh, we got time to put them on now. And looks like the flying is going to put us right into farming season, so let's get them on there. Plane's tail up. We took a level here and then measured two inches off the level and put our two inch we're going to string something from one end to the other and try to stretch it best we can and uh, to give us a good guide to go by. We'll have to clean this off with alcohol where they stick at. Pretty straightforward install. They send you these. You have to decide what you're putting them on. Uh, other Vortex generators give you where to put them with this. This goes from an inch and a half spacings all the way up to two and three quarter inch spacings. Um, the other, what the other people have put on, uh, stay close to this two, two and a half inch spacing. So that's what we're going to use. So we simply cut this out and put it on the line that we're getting ready to put up there. So the vortex generators then will go where the notches are. You put four on, you move it on down. So. So we'll see if we can get these put on there. Most of the vortex generators I saw online use this 3M adhesive tape, two-sided tape, and it is really stout, so I assume it's 
it's probably pretty good stuff. But I just take and slice off a 10 millimeter piece of tape there and pull the, you take the clear side off, leave the, leave this side on until you're ready to mount them. And then I clean them all with denatured alcohol on the bottom of them. And I just take and apply them to the tape here, lay them butt to head there, and basically lay them down on the tape. That is very, very sticky tape. The reason I lay them down on their butt first, because you get them lined up straight that way, and you can just go down with them once they once they're stuck. They are stuck. So once I get them all stuck on there, I end up with a piece like this, and I'll just simply take the razor knife and cut in between those to mount them on the wing. Okay, we have placed our wire. We used a wire because that's what I had handy. We placed our red wire down through there. We have, this is where the stove fence, the stove fence is sitting on the hood there. This stove fence goes on this rib here. I started by splitting the middle of these two. So it's just a matter, I, I taped this piece of paper to the ruler just to make it more stiff, but the matter of just laying this on the red line and putting your VGs where they are cut out at. Get that done, you go on to the next one. And that's where they'll stay. Only about 170 more. We'll have her done. I am putting the stove fences. There is a stove fence I can show you here. I just have them sitting up there. There is a stole fence that goes up on top of the wing here midways. And you want to be careful not to get a VG sitting there. So I went ahead and set them up there so I would know. Uh, I just started, you know, straddle that. And I'm going both ways. That way I don't won't have anything come out where they need to set up. So now it's just a matter of. Peel and stick, peel and stick, peel and stick. See what we can get done. One thing I learned very quickly when I started laying these out here is that when you put one down, if it touches the paper, this 3M double-sided tape uh, will actually tear the paper before it will release. So I went back and I took, uh, I don't know if you can see, you can see the tape up here. I went back to some clear packaging tape and taped this piece of paper on both sides and then cut these out again. And now they've got a good plastic uh, part to them. If you stick to them, you won't tear them. You can pull them out from underneath the tape if need be. So just watch out for that. Just uh, lay them out and stick them on. About all there is to it. All right, they're all on. Hopefully, they'll work as advertised. We'll make it really fun to clean the leading edge, I can tell that. <laughs> That's what they look like. We ran them the last three foot is recommended uh, to run them a little closer. We ran these two and a quarter. The rest of them are two and a half on our scales that came with it. So two and a half all the way out to the last three foot that we ran two and a quarter. The thought process behind there on them up is to make this last three foot stall last. Uh, if you're in an airplane that stalls, you definitely want the wings to stay level when you stall. That keeps you from going into a spin. So that's the idea of narrowing up on the ends. Uh, the spacing, 
Dustin Dixon, him and his brother Corey have built two of these. And uh, this is the spacing. There's very few STI wings that are out flying right now. And some of them have very little response to these. They just put theirs farther forward and got a good response, like eight mile an hour, I believe it was. Less than stall speed, so. And that's what I, everything I read is, is showing on a fatter wing. Uh, you need to bring them farther forward. So that's what we did. Thanks to them for the info. Got to buy some more for the tails. They go underneath the tail also. Goes underneath the tail here also, and that keeps your elevator from stalling out on you. Gives you more authority for longer. The problem with going slow is it causes problems everywhere else. A uh, plane likes to go fast. So as long as you're going fast, you got plenty of air flowing over all your surfaces. When you get a wing up here that'll go slow, now the problem is the elevator was good to about 40 mile an hour, and then your full up elevator uh, quits you. The air comes off, off of here, and it just leaves the elevator when you get too slow. So we'll put the vortex generators under here in a row, and then that will hopefully keep the air stuck to our elevator down to the low 30s where we're hoping to be stalling when we get to flying. Alrighty, let's catch you on the next one.